Hey guys, Tom here from SynthHacker.com and welcome back to another tutorial for Extra Record Serum. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at making this Todd Turge style key sound. So this key sound is taking inspiration from Todd Turge's track uh, Inspector Nos, and it's kind of like a new disco pad slash um, stab sound. Really, really cool sound, and I had uh, one or two requests uh, for Todd Turge type sound. Um, I also might do uh, some other Todd Turge tutorials for Serum and also for Massive. So let me uh, let me know like if there's any specific sounds that you want to know um, how to create. Um, and yeah, it's just a really, really cool sound. Definitely got that like new disco vibe but could also be used um, for a, a multitude of genres, really. Um, so we're going to be using um, Serum to create this sound completely from scratch. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just initialize the patch here, um, and we'll get into making it in just a second. Um, before we do that, I'll mention, guys, um, as, as I was doing in Armour Tutorials, um, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out my website over at synthhacker.com um, or click the link in the description below. Um, there you'll find uh, all the preset packs that I actually have available for Serum, um, as well as a mega pack which contains all the presets that I've ever, ever made for Serum. Um, you guys will definitely, definitely get a lot of use out of that um, and definitely go ahead and check that out if you haven't done uh, so already. There's audio demos for those on there as well. Um, so yeah, thanks to Advance if you decide to purchase that. Um, you'll get a lot of use out of those sounds um, and also you know you can kind of look at the sounds um, look at how I've created them and and kind of like reverse engineer them and learn from them as well um, so definitely go ahead and check that out over at synthhacker.com I'll click the link in the description below um, but without further ado let's begin making this Todd Turge key sound so the first thing we're going to do is just make sure that the sub oscillator oscillator A and oscillator B are all on. Um, we're going to set these all to saw waves. We're actually going to be using the sub oscillator in a different way to um, how we usually would. Um, and what we're going to do here is just give both oscillator A and B seven voices of unison. We're just going to be using three um, squ uh, not square waves, sorry, saw waves, and we're going to pitch oscillator B down one octave uh, below oscillator A. And then we're going to pitch the sub oscillator um, one octave above oscillator A. So then we've got this like really nice spread um, of frequency content in the sound. But what you want to make sure you do is just turn down the level on the sub oscillator because this is just going to be providing some upper harmonics to the sound. Uh, but we don't want this to completely dominate the sound. So we're just going to bring this uh, level down a little bit. Also, obviously, because it's a sub oscillator, it's mono, we can't give it any voices of unison. Um, and so... Uh, the, these oscillators are being kind of softened a little bit by the unison, but this is going to sound a little bit harsh So that's another reason just to keep the, the level down a bit Now for oscillator B, we're going to bring the detune down quite a bit So we've got that nice solid low end to the key sound But then for the upper upper like octave of the sound or the middle octave of the, of the sound We can kind of get away with having this a little bit more detuned than uh, oscillator B So so far we just have this which will sound a little bit far away uh, from what we're ending up with So that's just the basic um, kind of richness of the sound that we're going to sculpt away at using our envelopes, uh, filters, and effects. Um, so the, the first thing we're going to do is just dive into envelope one. We're going to be using this as a modulation envelope, but we're also going to be obviously using this as our amplitude envelope because by default in Serum, envelope one is the uh, amplitude envelope. Um, we're just going to give this um, around 600 or so um, milliseconds of decay. This is quite a short key sound. And the other thing we're going to do is give this um, quite a little bit of a type. We're going to give this about 50, 52, around 48 uh, milliseconds of attack, which gives it that really nice kind of... Um, it's hard to kind of put into words, but instead of just being like a normal key sound, it kind of like sucks into the sound. It's really cool, especially when you apply this to the cutoff of the filter, which we're going to do in just a second. Um, we're also going to give the sound just a little bit of release, about 200 or so milliseconds. Um, and now we just have this. So already you can kind of hear the sound shaping up close to 
uh, what we want it to actually be at. So now we're going to switch on our filter. We're just going to use the MG Low Pass 12 dB filter. And we're going to make sure that oscillator A, B, and also uh, the sub oscillator, which is just this S here, is also being routed uh, through the filter. We're going to bring the cutoff down a little bit, and we're going to boost the resonance a little bit. And what we're going to do here is use this envelope to modulate both the um, cutoff of the filter and also the uh, resonance of the filter as well. What you'll notice in, in quite a lot of Todd Turges, like even his lead sounds, keys, everything has like tons of resonance. And although like sometimes it can sound a little bit cheesy when you have like way too much resonance on a sound, that's kind of like the style that you that he's going for in these like new disco type tracks. So now you'll you'll notice this is really kind of um, brought the sound to life a little bit. <laughs> Um, and what's really cool about applying the um, envelope to the resonance as well is that when the sound starts, and um, because we've applied the envelope to the cutoff frequency, the sound's going to be starting at higher frequencies and it's going to have a lot of resonance. But then when the um, the envelope makes the cutoff sweep down to lower frequencies, uh, the resonance isn't going to be as harsh, so you're not going to get that really kind of like boomy low end. Um, it's just something really, really cool um, to, to bear in mind. Um, the next thing we're going to do is just dive into the effects section. We're going to use the hyperdimension effect um, quite subtly just to add some unison to the, the, the sound as a whole. Um, this will really, really help given that um, our sub oscillator doesn't have any unison. Um, so this is just going to help kind of make that sound a little bit less harsh and give unison to the sound as a whole. Um, and then we're also going to use this dimension effect just to kind of uh, add a little bit of thickness and, and width to the sound. <laughs> Really, really nice. The next thing we're going to do is just add a little bit of chorus just to thicken up the sound uh, even further. We're going to bring the mix amount down on this a little bit though because we don't want it to be too extreme and bring the rate down just a little bit. <laughs> And then from here, you kind of are free to kind of do what you want. I mean, I did play around with delay a little bit. I mean, it sounds okay, but I wasn't really that keen on it. If you were going to do this, I'd advise maybe putting it on the, uh, wait, just link them both, put them on their triplet um, half setting. It sounds good when it's quite subtle, um, and if you bring the feedback down a little bit. You can even try this dot um, half setting as well, which sounds pretty good. I think that's like my favorite setting to put it on if I was going to use delay. Um, it's completely up to you whether you use it or not. And then obviously you can just add a subtle bit of reverb as well. And um, I did actually add some reverb to the sound for the demo at the start, but there wasn't any delay. So I'll just switch the delay off for now. Um, but what I would advise doing if you are going to use the reverb is just cut some of the low frequencies out, cut some of the high frequencies out as well so it doesn't sound too harsh and maybe bring the, the size down a little bit and you really, for a sound like this, you really kind of want the mix to be quite low. You don't want it to be too much of an extreme uh, wet reverb. <laughs> And then finally, just to clean the sound up a little bit, I added a uh, low pass um, EQ, sorry, a high pass EQ. And that's the that's the basic sound. It is like a, quite a simple sound, um, but just some really really cool techniques that you can take away uh, from this video. And I'll definitely play around with you know different filters, maybe different uh, wavetables. Even I would advise for this kind of sound to keep quite simple waveforms. But obviously, you know, go crazy, go wild, and do whatever you want with it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you got a lot out of this video. Um, let me know uh, what kind of tutorials you want me to do in future. And again, go ahead and check out my website over at synthhacker.com if you haven't done already. 
or the click the link in the description below. Also to stay up to date with new tutorials for Serum and also other synths and random sound design stuff. Um, if you're interested in new videos that I bring out definitely go ahead and hit subscribe um, as well as staying up to date with my new videos that way it also helps support me uh, and the channel because that's one of the, the best ways that I can grow by gaining new subscribers. Um, any questions feel free to leave them down below and like the video if it helped you out and yeah that's all from me thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.